Hey, what's up guys? So for a while now with newer VFO dash cams, they've had this new feature called the Wi-Fi station mode that allows some remote connectivity to your dash cam. The idea is you're gonna take your dash cam and connect it to your home Wi-Fi. And then once you do, there's two main features you're gonna get. Number one, it's gonna allow you to remotely live stream the dash cam footage from your car to your computer, kind of like a remote security camera. And number two, you're also able to access all the video files stored on the dash cam's memory card and you can also download any of those video files from the dash cam directly to your computer over your home Wi-Fi. Now, at first glance, this sounds like cloud connectivity, but a cloud connected dash cam is actually very different. The key difference is the fact that these dash cams work anywhere, not just when they're parked by your house connected to your home Wi-Fi. To do this, they typically have a SIM card that you pop in and they can be connected just like a cell phone uh, to cell towers while you're out and about. So let's say, for example, you're out at a restaurant and somebody hits your car while you're parked. Well, because it's connected to the cloud, it can send a notification out to your phone. You can see kind of like what's going on. You can then live stream directly and see what's going on in real time. That video can also then be backed up to the cloud. So you've got a second copy of that video footage, not just what's stored in the dash cam itself. You can also remotely do things like go in and change the different settings in the dash cam from your phone, or you can upgrade the firmware over the air without having to be sitting right next to the dash cam. So a cloud connected dash cam offers a ton of additional functionality. That said, this Wi-Fi station feature does kinda, sorta, not really, but kinda <laughs> add some similar functionality and I haven't really played with it before. So I wanted to just quickly sit down and take a look at what it's like. Now on VFO's website, they've got a whole tutorial that goes over how you set all of this up. And they also list all of their current models that support this feature. And I'll link to their walkthrough down in the video description. And in this video, we'll go ahead and just walk through the process together. And I wanna quickly demo what the features and capabilities are like in practice. And so with that said, let's jump right into it. Now to set this up, you're gonna to wanna to grab your phone and go ahead and connect to the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot uh, available here in the dash cam. Once you've got your phone connected, we'll go ahead and connect like this. Then we'll go over to settings, and then we're gonna scroll all the way down until we get to the Wi-Fi station configuration option. We're gonna tap on that like this, and it's gonna give us two boxes. The first one here is gonna be for our home Wi-Fi network, and then the second one is gonna be for our Wi-Fi password. Then once you enter it in, we hit okay, and it's gonna disconnect, and now it's gonna go ahead and connect over here to your home Wi-Fi network. So it just said Wi-Fi station mode enabled. And if we pull it up here now, uh, we're gonna see the Wi-Fi SSID that it's connected to, the password that we're connected to, and the IP address that uh, the uh, dash cam has pulled. If you have a dash cam like the A139 Pro that doesn't have a display, you're gonna have to go to your home router and take a look at the connected devices and pull the IP address that way. Now, if Wi-Fi station mode doesn't turn itself on automatically, or down the line, you wanna turn it on manually, especially after the initial setup, uh, here's the process and how you can do that. Now, if you have uh, one of these dash cams here, you're gonna press and hold the record button and the Wi-Fi button simultaneously. Uh, if you have one of these dash cams, the 229 or 329 series, instead you're gonna be pressing the microphone and Wi-Fi button on together at the same time. Then once it's connected to your network and it says Wi-Fi connected, uh, we've got a couple different uh, options here. And what we're gonna do is again, pull the IP address off the back of the dash cam or off your Wi-Fi router. And then we've got the option to both live stream the video using a free video player called VLC, or we can actually go into the dash cam to view the recorded files that are stored in the memory card. And for this, we're gonna be using our web browser. We'll start here first with the uh, live streaming option. And to do this, we're gonna wanna go in, just following these instructions here, and we're gonna wanna open a network stream and then in the uh, network URL area, we're gonna type in RTSP colon backslash backslash and then the IP address of the dash cam. And opening up VLC here, I'm gonna go up to file and then open network. This might be a little bit different if you're on Linux or Windows or something, I'm doing it here on the Mac. Uh, but opening this up, we're gonna wanna go over here to the network area and then we're gonna type in RTSP colon backslash backslash and then the IP address of the dash cam. Then we'll hit open and it's gonna go ahead and start live streaming here from the dash cam. And if I pick up the dash cam and wave my hand underneath it, you can go ahead and see that on the computer now as well. And to give you an even better example, we'll go back over here and take a look at my A329T that I've got streaming in the car. And if we pull that up here, you can see, well, all three channels here from the A329T. We've got the front camera right down here, the front telephoto, as well as the rear cam. And you can see the clock going by here, uh, letting me know that it's actually streaming. And 
you might see some cars or like wind blowing or something with the leaves. <laughs> uh, anyways, as far as the quality, it's actually gonna be pretty low resolution. It's not streaming in 4K or anything. If we go take a look at uh, some of the details here, it's actually streaming at 640 by 360. So very low resolution, uh, 30 FPS, so nice and smooth, if it can handle that, you know, assuming how good of a Wi-Fi connection you have and whatnot, but it's not 1080p or 4K or anything. It's 640 by 360. And sometimes, again, depending on the quality of your internet connection, it may go out like this. I have also noticed that it needs a pretty strong connection or else it may have difficulty connecting in the first place. And sometimes connectivity can be a little hit or miss, it's also worth noting that you can't change which camera angle the dash cam is looking at. I've actually got it set up right now showing all three camera angles on the back of the dash cam's LCD. And if you wanna change what would show up on the streaming side, you actually have to press the Wi-Fi button on the back of the dash cam and cycle through all the different camera angles. And whatever's showing up on the back of the dash cam's LCD, that is what it's gonna output over Wi-Fi. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can view all of the recorded files that are stored in the Dashcam's memory card using our browser. And to do that, we just wanna type the IP address of the Dashcam into the browser's address bar. So I'll just type that in here and I'll hit enter and boom, it's gonna go ahead and pull it up. Now, we've got the option here to see everything on the card. So we'll go into DKIM, uh, we can see the photos and videos. So we'll hit movie uh, and it's gonna go ahead and pull up all the video files that are actually stored in the Dashcam's memory card. Uh, it'll give us the file sizes and all this kind of stuff. Looks like we can also delete some of the video files. If we wanna download them, we just uh, click on it here like this. And if your browser says that it's an insecure file, uh, we'll just hit keep and start downloading. Now the transfer speeds are gonna be incredibly slow and basically unusable because the car is parked outside. And so if I repeat the process here with the other dash cam that's here in my office, this time you'll notice the Wi-Fi transfer speeds are way faster. This is gonna be much, much better. And then going back to the root directory, it also looks like we've got the ability to upload files here too. So let's say you go over to VFO's website uh, and you grab maybe the latest firmware for your dash cam right off of their website. Then you can go over here and you could upload those files. Uh, and then next time the dash cam boots back up, well, it's gonna go ahead and uh, grab that latest firmware and update itself, which is pretty cool. You could also build a script to help download all this stuff automatically. For example, for some other brands of dash cams like Blackfuse, there's scripts available to automatically download everything when the dash cam is connected to your home Wi-Fi over to your Synology NAS. Uh, there's also options here where you can download all the stuff over your Wi-Fi network to a local server that you've got sitting at home. Additionally, if you drive a Tesla, there's another project here on GitHub that allows you to take a Raspberry Pi, for example, and then automatically copy the recordings to a local server when you get home uh, over your home Wi-Fi network. So if you want, you could build upon any one of these projects here uh, and kind of fork it to develop something similar for your VFO dash cam. Additionally, when it comes to automation, when you get home and park your car, the dash cam will actually automatically turn off Wi-Fi and not connect to your home's Wi-Fi hotspot. For example, I've got it connected here right now, but if I uh, kick the dash cam over into parking recording mode, it's going to disconnect itself from my home Wi-Fi. So when you take a look here, as you can see, it's now disconnected. Now, if I want to go in and access it to maybe download footage or something when the car is parked and running off the battery, I'm gonna to have to go over here and manually turn Wi-Fi station mode back on by pressing and holding these two buttons. So it's not really designed for like automatic offloading every time you get home. It's for when you wanna manually turn it on here like this and then go in and do all the remote connectivity stuff. Additionally, there's also some other annoyances here. So like when I'm connected to station mode, uh, I can't stop the video uh, to go in and start uh, changing my settings. You can see it says, well, please turn off Wi-Fi before proceeding. And I can't currently connect to the dash cam over Wi-Fi until I turn off station mode. It can't be simultaneously connected to your home Wi-Fi and to your phone. And I'll put it back into driving recording mode just to avoid any weird issues that can sometimes happen when you're in parking recording mode. But just to demo the same thing, uh, if I wanna stop here, I can't go in and uh, adjust any of my settings when it's here. I'm gonna have to turn off station mode here first. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm gonna press and hold this. Now Wi-Fi will turn off. And then if I wanna connect with my phone, now I have to turn it on a second time by pressing just the Wi-Fi button. Wi and when I do that, now I can connect to it using my phone app to change settings and do all that kind of stuff, which is different than uh, turning on station mode by doing this. So it is something that you're gonna to have to manually activate whenever you want. And it's also gonna preclude you from being able to do things like stopping recording to change settings and makes it a little bit tougher to get your phone uh, connected here via Wi-Fi because there's just a few more steps you gotta jump through. So uh, it does have this capability here with station mode, but it's 
definitely not gonna be on par with like a true cloud connected dash cam. And so now that we're familiar with the Wi-Fi station mode feature, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Does this sound like something that you could see yourself using? Does it sound useful? I'm curious to hear your perspective. For me personally, I don't really see myself using it. Uh, live streaming, I guess could be kind of nice, um, but if it's only gonna work like while you're at home, I could just use my home security cameras or something. Uh, if I'm traveling and like get an Airbnb or something, I guess I can always remotely connect it to the Airbnb's Wi-Fi. And then if I need to keep an eye on my car or something and just kind of tap in, I could always do that. Maybe I could use it for that. I understand it's not fair to compare it to like a properly designed cloud dash cam, but I'm trying to think of like use cases when I could potentially find myself using it. For the remote download feature, there's no way to like actually preview the images to see like uh, which video you should download. Personally, I would just grab the memory card and put it in the computer and just download that way. That'll be way faster or even using the app. At least you get the image preview so you can see which video file you need to download. So like this feels kind of like a proof of concept. It's like you can do it, but it would need a lot more work before it would actually be something I think that people would want to use. I know on VFO's website, they do have a mention of cloud functionality for their fleet customers. And I asked them about this and it's basically like something that they built on top of the Wi-Fi station mode where they can custom build their own servers to automatically offload video footage. Again, I find that to be a little bit tedious because you have to go in and like manually turn it on and then have it work. It's not gonna be as automated as you would want. So like, again, this feels more of like a proof of concept. It works, but it needs a lot more work to make it like really good and useful, I think. But anyways, it's something I've been wanting to play around with for quite a while. And yeah, that's a look at how it works. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great. And I'll see you in the next one.